we continue appreciating the name of the Lord for his uh, manifold blessings upon us and uh, I'm once again happy and blessed to bring you the number six in the series the latter rain and uh, we are just laying the foundation of some deeper things that uh, we will come to discuss this is the number six as in the day of Pentecost as in the day of Pentecost we want to see what happened on the day of Pentecost and what we should under the early rain and what we should be expecting to happen during the time of the latter rain we understand that the early rain was a miniature of uh, what is going to happen on the day of Pentecost and so it's good to have a background of what happened on the day of Pentecost so that uh, we may understand what will happen and what is happening in the days that we are living in because sometimes we don't understand per se the things that pertains to our times and we are told that the things that has been they shall be and there is nothing new under the sun and the things that happened in the past were ensembles for us and to us who have come to the end of the days and so I welcome you in the presentation as in the day of Pentecost and as we delve in the Word of God I like to implore his presence and even thank him for the rains that you are experiencing so that we may be able to plant and have a harvest for those of you for those of us and for those who are in the country I know that the Lord is teaching you one or two three things so that uh, you may be able to pass information to others so let us pray as we begin Heavenly Father we thank you again thank you for your word which is rich and it makes our soul refreshed help us Lord to know our times of visitation that we may not cry with those who shall cry for the opportunities squandered and the opportunities missed help us to understand the times of our visitation and thank you for Jesus Christ whom thou have sent and died for us and now is our high priest ministering in the heavenly sanctuary above accord us thy own righteousness and bless us with thy spirit of truth that we may understand what is truth and be sanctified by it in Christ Jesus name I pray amen and so as it were in the day of Pentecost let us go to the book of Acts chapter 2 then brothers and sisters may the Lord bless you wherever you are as we study his word Acts chapter 2 is where we are going. The book of Acts chapter 2. And this is what is recorded and when the day of Pentecost were fully come they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation, under heaven. 
Now when this were noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And others jumped to verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, There these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third of the day. But this is what, that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the God, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids shall pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I'll show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And so on the day of Pentecost, they came to understand that these people were not drunk, but they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, how do we know that they came to understand that they were filled with the Holy Ghost after thinking that they were drunk? Turn with me to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Acts Acts chapter 4 from verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived brethren look here that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge you see that word? They took knowledge of them. They took knowledge of them. What is this knowledge they took of them? That they had been with Jesus. And so when the day of Pentecost happened, even the naysayers came to understand that these people had been with Jesus. And when they came to understand that they had been with Jesus, I'll go down Acts chapter 6 quickly and in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied there arose a murmuring in the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration and they chose the and after Luke Seven after Pentecost, look at verse seven. What happens next? They took knowledge that they had been with Jesus, and then, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. 
we are looking at the thing as it were in the day of Pentecost. And so, we are just seeing a miniature of the things that will happen at the end times. The things that will happen in the end time. Now, there is something that is pointed out and uh, I'll backtrack for a minute before I continue. They took notice of the disciples. I'll go back. of Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, verse 13, chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Neither now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. So these people had not received the knowledge that the world will say it is what is esteemed in the world so much. I want you to notice something in Selected Messages Book 2, page 58, paragraph 4. Unladen men doing the work of God as it were in the day of Pentecost. Look at 2SM 58.4 Under the showers of the latter rain, the inventions of man, the human machine and the Holy Spirit If the grammar is faultless, the living water will flow in God's own channel. Tie that with Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw, I will tie that, if you are putting references, put in Acts chapter 4 verse 13 to a same 15. In the day of Pentecost, so shall it be repeated in the time of the ministration of the latter rain. Put your 2SM58 here in Acts chapter 4. Verse used in these days. He will use outpour his Holy Spirit upon the people. What we need is to surrender our hearts so that God may find ready vessels to be used. Look at great controversy Page 606, paragraph 2. Great controversy. Page 606, paragraph 2. If you don't have your great controversy near, follow on the screen. We are talking as it were in the days of Pentecost. Thus the message of the third angel will be proclaimed as the time comes for it to be given with greatest power. The Lord will work through humble instruments, leading the minds of those who consecrate themselves to his service. The laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of his spirit than by the training of literary institutions. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God gives them. The saints of Babylon's will results of enforcing the observance of the church the 
all will be unmasked. By this solemn warning, the people will be stirred. Thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words like this. In amazement, they will they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church fallen because of her errors and sins, because of her rejection of the most quiet, quiet the awakened conscience. But since many refuse to be satisfied with the mere authority of men and demand a plan, thus said the Lord, the popular ministry, like the Pharisees of old, filled with anger as the authorities question, will denounce the messages of us of Satan and stir up the sin-loving multitude to revile and persecute. So, this action of the spirit than the training of literary institutions. We are looking at number six in the series, The Latter Rain, as it were in the day of Pentecost. The Lord is about and he is doing something so great in our midst. Falling where we are and partaking, not partaking of it because we do not realize the providence of God. And so, afflicted children to be the sport of Or because we do not pray in faith, believing that we shall be blessed the special influence of the Holy Spirit. The true seeker through the mediation of Christ, the gracious gift, are imparted in order that the receiver may impart a knowledge of saving truth. Why do we not believe the plain, thus saith the Lord? soul a vital transfusion of himself. He acts through their faculties and causes them to choose his will and to act out his character. Christ impresses upon the mind of believers the fact that they are to have the glory which the Father has given him, in order that all who love and serve him may be I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me wherever I am, that they may behold my glory, character which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me because before the foundation of the world. Uh, this is the Sabbath school work, February 1, 1896. Are we daily giving our lives so that we may be used? The Lord Jesus loves his people and when they put their trust in him, depending all upon him, he strengthens them. He will live through them, giving them the inspiration of his sanctifying spirit, imparting to the soul a vital transfusion of himself. my life will be in you. There is a sense that you could say I am in you because it is originated as a part of me but we know that once my blood leaves of my body it's no longer me in any sense. I can give you a piece of my mind but it doesn't mean that I am independently thinking in you. I find it disturbing when people don't understand what it means the transfusion instrumentalities and so in this spirit there is the sanctifying influence 
because we are told that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. And we are told, sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is truth. In this word, Two thirteen, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, Brother, beloved of the Lord. God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So, for this sanctification to take place, as it were in the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, they were in one place, in one accord. Accord in what? Searching the scriptures and studying the prophecies so that they may harmonize what they were having, so that truth may get hold of them, they may be able to spread to others. Ephesians 1 13, in whom you also trusted after that, you had the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, when we believe the truth, we are sealed with the, pro the, the, the Spirit of promise. We are sealed with that Spirit. And then, we are able to stand in the presence of God and be used of Him, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which lives. And this sanctification is brought about in John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And so, by being born of the water and the Spirit, we partake of the divine. And so, look here. When we believe the truth, we receive the Spirit of God. And when we receive the Spirit of God, something happens. And uh, I want, I like you to see something in the book of Ephesians, chapter four. Ephesians, Ephesians. Verse, uh, verse, um, verse 1. I therefore, let me blow it on the screen then. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1. I therefore. endeavoring to keep the unit of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ wherefore he captive and gave gifts unto them Descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up for far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Of children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slave of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive therein the fruit 
and we receive the gifts for the So we need the grace of Christ, the oil of Christ, so that we may be able to be recreated and be animated in our spiritual life. afraid of nothing and their lives and their speech even affected the priest who had crucified Jesus Christ we will want to witness such a power happening in our days where actually those people who have made light of the Word of God may see the And as they asked that, Peter was able uh, to turn them unto Christ. And then they were baptized and the number was added in those days to the church of God. And so, Christ has given us his spirit, not the spirit of fear. So, as it were in the day of Pentecost, Christ has commissioned his disciples to go throughout the world and give a message of the end time. So, holy men, the And it will not be efficacious to those who are actually uh, listening to our messages. Now, there is another aspect I, I would like to speak. On the day of Pentecost, men, cloven tongues, came and amidst uh, the people, the presence of the angels ministering to the people, to the disciples on that day of Pentecost. And so, Holy Ghost sent down from heaven with things the angels desire to look into. So, on the day of Pentecost, they were the, the Spirit was poured, and we are told that angels desire to look into these things. And this is the part also I, I want to speak about. Psalms 34 verse 7 says that, and he was able to come out of the prison so on the during the, 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 the early reign the angels were able to minister in some great uh, uh, power to the disciples who had just received the early reign from Christ when he was uh, 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 his integration was in heaven and so during the latter rain also we shall see a manifestation of the angel working amidst us. They will protect us. They will instruct us. And in fact, there is something that we are told that at that time something will happen. We shall be 
protected by the angels. Great Controversy 631, paragraph 1. The heavenly sentinels, faithful to their trust, continue their watch. Though a general decree has fixed the time when commandment keepers may be put to death, their enemies will in some cases anticipate the decree and before the time specified will endeavor to take their lives. But none can pass the mighty guardian stationed upon about every faithful soul. as it were in the day of Pentecost. I'm looking at that. This is the presentation, the number six in the series, the latter rain. And so the angels will be a ministers for protection. Less in the plan of redemption. In Exodus 36 35, also angels were woven on the veil, and between the holy and the most holy place, we had covering cherubims in the most holy place, one on either side of the Ark of the Covenant. Exodus 25 20. in the days of Pentecost. And so, in the day of Pentecost, there was the ministration of the angels, and in the end time, there will be ministration of the, the angels. Psalms 80 verse 1 says, God dwells between the cherubims. Why are there the cherubims? Why do we have these cherubims? Why do we have these angels? Matthew chapter 4 verse 11. Angels were sent to minister to Jesus. Then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him. At the time when we have uh, hard times and uh, we know even angels fed a lot. prayers to him and bring others back you shall see the angels descending and ascending upon the son of man and so just as it were in the day of Pentecost so shall it be in these days we shall see And watch God's message to the protect from power mind in terms of needs or conscience and so on. For I think that God has displayed us, that is first Corinthians four nine. The apostles last as men condemned to death, for we have been So, they play a significant role, and we see that uh, in the end times, as it were in the day of Pentecost, there shall be an special ministration from heaven. All heaven will pour down its richest gifts, the Holy Spirit, the angels shall be in our midst, On this theme that 
during the time of the latter rain Christ shall be sent unto us we read in the book of Acts chapter 3 as it were in the day of Pentecost look at the book of Acts chapter 3 from verse 19 Acts as it were in the day of Pentecost. That is the title of our presentation. Acts chapter 3 verses 19. Shall we read together? Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Sins were blotted out during the day of atonement. During 1844 the day of atonement and we are in the day, day of atonement and see what will happen repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord what is the time of the refreshing it is that special time of bestowing the latter pain And I think you can see the screen with me. Repent ye and be converted, and then he shall send Jesus Christ. This is not the second coming. This is at the time of refreshing. So this is not the second coming. God will send At this time, it is not the second coming, for he is sent until the time of restitution. Now, the time of restitution is the time when everything is given back to the saints, when the kingdom is established, the papacy is destroyed, the So, we must receive Christ first in our hearts in the time of the blotting out of the sins, which is accompanied by the refreshing, that is the latter rain, the showers and the latter rain. It is sent in our heart. In that day, Christ is sent. During this time that we are in, and the angels will minister unto us. We shall see this. Human agencies are the hands of heavenly instrumentalities for heavenly angels employ human hands in practical ministry. education and experience. Thus, as we become partakers of the divine nature and separate selfishness from our lives, special talents for helping one another are granted us. This is heaven's way of administering saving power. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, Volume 3. And representatives of omnipotent power will give help in this time of need. If we will become one in mind and heart with the heavenly intelligences, we can be worked by them. Men to whom God has entrusted capabilities and talents of means will be impressed by him to take on the burden of responsibility and help. Pentecost 
the angels used human hands, humans for practical ministry, and they shall be a special bestowal of the Spirit in the end times, and the angels will be in our ministry users. If there are only a few assembled, there are enough to claim the precious promises of God. This is signs of the time, February time. And the pouring of God's Holy Spirit. So, the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit is made able by the presence of the Father, the Son, and the holy angels. God has rich blessings in store for those who will bring not only all the tithes into the storehouse, but also because the presence of the Father, the Son, and the holy angels will be amidst them, and there shall be an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit as it were in the days of Pentecost. We need to understand better than we do the mission of the angels. It will be well to remember that every of God, cherubim and seraphim and angels that excel in strength stand at God's right hand. All ministering spirits send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. This is uh, called Potua Ministry, page 110, paragraph 1, also found in the Acts of the Apostles, page 154. So, to cooperate with members of our churches in communicating the light that God has general, generously given that our people may be prepared for the coming of Christ. They are ever near. Those who labor for the good of others are working in union with the heavenly angels. They have their constant companionship, their unceasing ministry. Angels of light and power are ever service possible to human beings in this are in this world are theirs nothing is apparently more helpless yet really more invincible than the soul that feels its nothingness and relies wholly on the merits of the savior god will send every angel in heaven to the aid of such a one rather than allow him to be overcome actually uh, during the time of the latter rain. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm speaking about the angels on the, as it were in the day of Pentecost. Our converses are having marked success and why should they not? The heaven Those who humbled the heart before him and sanctified themselves in faith and humility, following the example of the great teacher and speaking words that will enlighten those not of our faith, we are to work patiently and disinterestedly as the servants of the Lord, opening the scriptures to others. CM 11, paragraph 2. Much responsibility rests upon the converser. He should courage to many souls they come to soften our hearts God will impress those who whose hearts are open to truth and who are longing for guidance he will say to his human agent speak to this one or to that one of the love of Jesus no sooner is the name of Jesus mentioned in love and tenderness than angels of God draw near
so the day of Pentecost and it will be repeated on a larger grand scale during the time of the latter rain. Every converser has positive and constant need of the angelic ministration for he has an important work to do, a work that he cannot do in his own strength. Those who are born again who are willing to be guided by the Holy Spirit doing Such a help is far above all the advantages which expensive embellishments are supposed to give. And then the angels give success. CM 112 paragraph 2. When men realize the times in which we are living, these times they will work as in the sight, they will work as in the sight of heaven. The converser will Is out the truth how the truth is presented in the books is woven into his own experience and developed in his character. When his own life is thus molded, he can go forward representing to others the sacred truth he is handling. Imbued with the Spirit of God, he will gain a deep rich experience. And so we understand that uh, God is doing a great work amidst us and he wants us to have success and we must appreciate the presence of Jesus Christ and his What kind of influence are we having around us? Is it of the evil angels or the holy angels? Are we being worked as the disciples were worked on the day of Pentecost? Or are we walking in our own devising? Jesus and the holy angels will give success to the efforts of intelligent, God-fearing men who do all in their power to save souls. Quietly, Had all waters showing forth the praises of him who had called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Those who are doing this work from right motives are doing an important work of ministering. They will manifest no feeble and decided character. Their minds are enlarging, their manner are becoming more refined. They should place no bounds to their improvement, but every day be better fitted to do. And let me see. He had felt in the Garden of Gethsemane when from his post were forced drops of blood, and where he would have died had not an angel been. beholding our course of action we need now keen perception that by our own practical godliness the truth may be made to appear truth as it is in Jesus the angelic agencies are messengers from heaven actually ascending and descending keeping earth in constant connection with the heaven above these angel messengers are observing all our course of messengers are the observing all our course of action they are ready to help all in their weaknesses guarding from all from moral and physical danger according to the providence of God and whenever souls yield to the all softening subduing influence of the Spirit of God under this angelic administration there is joy in heaven the Lord himself
and left the human beings to suffer without any help. He has sent all that heaven can send so that we may be shielded from the fallen angels and the enemy of the plan of who can bring them back to the one who has given his life to redeem them. And the Holy Spirit is cooperating with the ministry of human agents to arouse the moral powers by working on the heart, reproving of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. There is no line of work in which it is possible for the youth to receive greater benefit. All who engage in ministry the angels accomplish their missions angels speak through their voices and work by their hands and the human workers cooperating with heavenly agencies have the benefit of their education and experience as a means of education what university course can equal this now I say none again what we need All heaven. all heaven is blessed in your salvation and angels of God are waiting to do for you what they did for the disciples on the day of Pentecost brothers and sisters we are looking at the presentation For the disciples on the day of Pentecost, do your duty to your children and for those who are ignorant of the truth. Carry out the teachings of the word in your homes. You must stand in harmony with God of heaven if you will lay hold of divine power. Humanity may reach divinity through the faith in Christ. So, you understand that on the day of Pentecost, the angels worked mightily among us, the disciples, and they will work in our times. The angels of God are ever passing from earth to heaven and from earth to heaven. The miracles of Christ for the afflicted and suffering were wrought by the power of God through the ministration of To us. In taking upon himself humanity, our Savior unites his interest with those of the fallen sons and daughters of Adam, while through his divinity he grasps the throne of God, and thus Christ is the medium of communication of men with God and of God with men. Desire of Ages 143.1. After the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, And Satan. I have told you that Satan is seeking to uh, derail the plan of salvation. The work of the Holy Spirit was not limited to apostolic days. It is not confined to any child, large or small. The field of his ministration is the world. He will will This light bearers that the gospel is to be carried to all the nations of the earth. Review and Herald, January 20, 1891, paragraph 8. Shall we awake to what heaven wants to do for us? Christ will be with these humble workers. miracles in the conversion of sinners men and women will be gathered into church fellowship 
Meeting houses will be built and instruction of learning established. Angels of heaven will cooperate with those who unite with heaven. Consciousness of Christ in our lives. Appropriate his and we shall see Christ working in us mightily. Before the work is closed up and the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Angels from heaven will be in our midst. Through the ministry of the angels, the Holy Spirit is enabled to work upon the mind and heart of the human agent and draw him to Christ who has paid the ransom money for his soul, that the sinner may be rescued from the slavery of sin and Satan. But the Spirit of Province to draw the soul but never to force obedience. Christ is ready to impart all heavenly influences. He knows every temptation that comes to man and the capabilities of every human agent. He weighs his strength, he sees the present and the future and presents before the mind the obligation that should be made. And The Spirit will bring the God and trusted capabilities into Christ's service and will mold and fashion the human agent according to the divine pattern in proportion as the human agent shall honestly desire the transformation. Brothers and sisters, we cannot do without the Holy Spirit of God because it is the And we cannot say, we need the work. We do not need the angels. We need the omnipresence of the Father and the Son. We do not need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit, but we don't have a desire of the angels. of what shall be used during the latter rain or diminish even a title of what God says that he shall do. Look as it were in the day of Pentecost. Look at the Ethiopian eunuch and, uh, and uh, Philip. Reading from Worship was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. This Ethiopian was a man of good standing and of wide influence. God saw that when converted, he would give others the light he had received and would exert a strong influence in favor of the gospel. Angels of God were attending this. Seen to touch with one who could lead him to the light. Angel Holy Philip his work, the disciple did not say, as many are saying today, God does not mean that I'll not be too confident or I shall seek, shall make a mistake. Philip that day learned a lesson of conformity to God's will which was worth everything to him. He learned that every soul is the work of preaching the gospel that is 
It is sweet thing to read that. It is precious thing to read that. This is so much impressive. The heavenly angels do not undertake the work of preaching the gospel. Even if they will show themselves willing to be guided by placing themselves in position where they can communicate the light received. Now let nobody say that angels are spirits, it is the angels are the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit is the angel. The angels are a medium that the Father and Son sent the Holy Spirit to us. holy angels cannot be disconnected from the spirit because they are ministering spirits why are they called ministering spirits because they minister spirit symbol as that and this is a teaching that should be received Uh, 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 assume humanity or the resemblance of human being and even at that point they minister the spirit unto the people so you cannot just say the ministering spirit means that because the even in their visible form so they are not called ministering spirit per se because they are invisible but because they are ministering the spirit given to them to give to the humans review and herald july 20 1897 paragraph 6 the anointing one standing by the The golden oil represents the grace which God keeps the lambs of believers supplied, that they shall not flick and go out. Were it not for were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's spirit, the agencies of evil will have entire control over them. So the anointed ones, the true in the golden pipes into the bowels of the candlestick and then into the golden lamps that gave light to the sanctuary so from the holy ones that is the angels that stand in God's presence his spirit is imparted to the human instrumentalities who are consecrated to his service the mission of the two and power but by the spirit said the lord of hosts precious messages to us as it were in the day of pentecost i am afraid we have altogether too cheap and common ideas behold the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee let not one venture to limit the power of the holy one of israel they are conjectures and upon the earth doing his will. Desire of Ages 352.2 That was the AMR 207.4 As we come to an end. Now the Savior's eye penetrates the future. He beholds the broader fields in which after his death the disciples are to be witnesses for For the battle, 
he lays open before them the pills they must encounter, the self-denial that will be required. He desires them to count the cost, that they may not be taken unawares by the enemy. Their warfare is not to be waged against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of the, this darkness. Forces, but they are assured of supernatural help. All the intelligences of heaven are in this army, and more than angels are in the ranks. The Holy Spirit, the representative of the captain of the Lord's host, comes down direct to the battle. Our infirmities may be many, our sins and mistakes grievous. That is the Holy Angels and the Holy Spirit, the Omnipresent, the representative of the captain of the Lord's host, who is Jesus Christ himself, as it were in the day of Pentecost. This is the series, the latter rain. And when the presentation ends, you can click on the link and you shall have the present uh, the PowerPoint there. So, what are we saying? As it were in the days of Pentecost, uh, in time of the latter end, in time of the refresh, refreshing, we shall have this unbroken country. ascending and descending and it said that this is really the house of God and this is the gate of heaven and so we have this unbroken country Hebrews 1 7 and of the angels he said who make his, his spirits who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers of flame of fire Psalms 104 When the truth in its simplicity is lived in every place, then God will work through his angels as he worked on the day of Pentecost, and hearts will be changed. So decidedly that the so decidedly that there will be a manifestation of the infant of genuine. Christ, as much closer union with his Holy Spirit than ever they have had, or will have unless they will give up their will and their way, and submit to God's will and God's way. The great sin of those who profess to be Christian is that they do not open the heart to receive the Holy Spirit. When souls long after Christ and seek to become one with him, then those who are content with the form Financial conversion after the order of conversion after the day of Pentecost. Did you catch that? The Lord wants to do something. What is my last word unto us, brothers and sisters? We need a reconsecration of the heart. We need a reconsecration of the heart. We need to give ourselves fully to Christ one again. And this is what I leave with you, brothers and sisters. In such a time as we are living in, when God is about, when Christ is about to end his ministration in the most holy place, we must have 
a singleness of heart and a singleness to lead men into all truth. Christ says in the book of John 10, 16, Other sheep I have which are not part of this fold. Them also I must bring in that they may be brothers and sisters this is help in daily living page 48 to 49 this is what they to accomplish and the same devotion, the same self-denial and sacrifice, the same subjection to the claims of the word of God is to be made manifest, is to be manifest in his disciples. Everyone who accepts Christ as his personal savior will long for the privilege of serving God. Remember in Revelation chapter 7, the wheels are We long for the privilege of serving God. We shouldn't be desiring to be masters. We shouldn't be desiring to be lords, but servants. Contemplating what heaven has done for him, his heart is moved with boundless love and adoring gratitude. This is a servant. He is eager to signalize And sacrifice. This was the spirit during the day of Pentecost and it has to be the spirit during the outpouring of the latter rain under the refreshing of God. Brothers and sisters, the true worker for God will do his best because in so doing he can glorify his master. He will do right in order to regard the requirements of God. He will endeavor to improve that Christ may receive homage and perfect service. There is a picture. Now I want you to get this as we close. There is a picture representing a bullock standing between a plow and an altar with the inscription ready for either, ready to toil in the furrow or ready to be offered on the altar of sacrifice. May the Lord count on you, as the song says. He is waiting a people whom he can count on. Ready for toil or of Christ of every child of Christ he should be seeking to be used by God as it were on the day of Pentecost there is a picture representing a is the position of the true child of God willing to go where duty calls to deny self to sacrifice cause 
Abba Father in heaven, we thank you so much. Awake us in whichever way you can awake us that we may be used by thee. Send thy angels, as you send the angels in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, and it would Gomorrah and his heart was desiring to see your salvation. So should be the desire of everyone today. That is our desire. This world is filled with filthiness. What we want in our impart on us the spirit to finish the work, the spirit of boldness once more that we may be able to work in the divine yet. Without you, Father, we can do nothing. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to endow us with the fruit and the gift therein for perfecting of your church. Hear us as we pray. Grant us the means of for we ask these things in Christ. God bless you and God be with you. May He use you in such a times that you are living in, the end times. This world and all the things that you see, they are passing away. that you are ready to be used by him. It is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Spirit of God that these things are made possible. God be with you and continue instructing you and continue imparting his grace upon you so that you may be fit vessel 